Hey guys, it's Thanky. Welcome to the corner. Tonight is Thursday. It's about, it's almost 6 p.m. Long day at work. Warm in the craft room. So if you hear background noise, it's probably my fan. I have a small, like, little fan in the window. And I am doing laundry. So hopefully you, that background noise is not in there. I am going to be working on a journal from scratch, showing everybody how I make my journals. And then um, it's going to be several videos because I'm going to do a, each process more than likely because otherwise it'll be really, really long. Um, this is going to be the paper pack I'm going to use for a lot of the stuff inside my journal. It's for the where are you from journal for my group we're doing a swap in my group spanky's crafty corner the link will be in the description box down below basically you we're not picking partners or things like that you just pick whoever's in the list there's in the files area there's a file that says i'm in and anybody who's commented in that are other members of the group who are wanting to partake in this journal and it's an ongoing thing hopefully eventually we'll have everybody in the group has partaked partook partook I don't know has joined in <laughs> and we can have a little bit of everything from everybody a little bit of something from everybody yeah so the concept is you don't have to send anything majorly big. That's all up to you. You can do a brochure, a map, uh, printouts, napkins of your state or country, whatever. Just basically a little bit of info on where you're located. It doesn't be, have to be specific. It can be the country, the state, the county, you know, just a little bit tidbit about yourselves. And then you can mail it in a regular flat envelope, normal sized envelope, or a bigger one. It's up to you on what you send to the person. There's no specific one to send to, so it's up to you. And then you just, once you get your stuff from the person, or a person sends you something, you just include that in your journal. Um, I've already received something from Lisa Beard I believe is her last name I had it set out the other day and I moved stuff around and I don't know where I put it so oops but her and Carrie Lamb uh Carrie 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 not Carrie Lamb um yeah little C that's it <laughs> little C have sent me a couple things so I'm going to be using some of those when I get this done I'm I'm going to go how I do it usually I use a chipboard and do the front and back cover and the spine so I can make it as wide as I want but a lot of people don't have chipboard so I'm going to use empty cereal boxes I already know my spines gonna be too small here so I'm going to make it a little bit different probably just gonna use these and I have a larger box I haven't decided how big I want it because this one's a little bit bigger I think it's a little bit bigger no nah, not by much it's, it's bigger this way um, wider and the spine is a little bit lo larger not by much just a little maybe about a quarter inch of anything um but you, these feel really thin, flimsy, flimsy. Huh. I have a speech issue tonight. It started at work. It's been a day at work. Somebody scared the shit out of me. I screamed. My heart raced. I was crying because it scared me so bad. Yeah. And I told them not to scare me because, you know, I poop easily. Just kidding. I want a shirt made that says that because it's funny. But yeah, so it's just it's just been one of them days at work. 
it was ugh. and I was like I want to craft when I get home so hopefully this works but I think I'm gonna use this one there's a lot of videos on YouTube on how to make journal covers and so forth everybody's done it doing it getting there doing it um, I the first person I ever watched was Jeannie Bell Jenny Bell I think it's Jeannie Bell love her videos she did an amazing video that's the first person I ever watched do uh, junk journals and I loved her process and she used cereal boxes but she does hers a little different than how I do mine I just everybody gets their own style once they get started but basically oh I'll go over some of the other stuff that we're gonna use um, I'm gonna cover mine with paper uh, lunch sacks paper bags um, instead of like crumbled up craft paper <coughs> excuse me or um, things like that I'm just gonna use this in place of it it's not gonna be if you use chipboard your cover and such would be a little um, sturdier because cereal boxes are not that thick but you can reinforce it with a another box so if you're worried about the flimsiness or how sturdy it'll be you can always double stack it so if I was to use these two because they're the same box basically I could just you know cut the spine and the the covers off the spine and put them together and do it that way you know just when I open the box up I'll show you when I get started here on how to do that but that so I'm going to use this to put it to, over the top of the box like decoupaging it basically um, I'll rip the bags open and I'm just crinkle it up and get it a little wet and then glue it to the cereal box I'm lo I lose my train of thought really easy <laughs> it's kind of funny the next thing I'm going to use is Mod Podge. I have mats. I have another one. I don't know where it's at, but this is the only one I have on hand. And there's plenty of recipes out there on how to make your own Mod Podge. I haven't done it, so me personally, I don't know how well it works and things like that, but there's quite a few who have. Um, Stacy with Pink Poodle Craft makes her own. She has several videos. Um, I'm not sure anybody else. I just know she has one. Other than that, um, this is I have that. I also have some Fabri-Tac. I love Fabri-Tac. I love it so much I always forget whether or not I'm running low or not. And whenever I have a coupon and I'm at the store, I would always pick one up. Well, I unpacked my glue box. And I have one full bottle on my desk, plus that one, which is about only got about a quarter of an inch to an inch in left in it. And I unpacked. I have five more bottles on the shelf behind me. So, but it's really I like using Fabri-Tac. You don't get no ripples or bubbles or warpness in your paper. And when you use the Fabri-Tac, it's. I, I like it personally. Everybody, it's their own choice on what you use, but I love using Fabri-Tac. Um, this is an awl. I have a couple different types of one, but this one's really sharp. And I'll use this to make the holes where I want my holes at in the spine. But I'm going to be using eyelets for the on the spine. Um, I guess it depends on how thick I do this fine or whatever, but I got several eyelets here, different colors. And then I have a, this is a We Are Memories Keeper. It's a crocodile. I think this is a crocodile. I don't know what this one. Oh, maybe? I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> that's what I'll be using on that. And you can actually, this side, the little the little one here let me put this up so I don't drop it and my scoreboard you need a scoreboard you don't need one but I'm gonna use mine this is what I'm gonna have on mine for mine 
this end here is what would make the hole. When you, oh, you can't, I don't know if you can see it. There you go. It, when you do it, it, this little thing comes out and that's like a paper puncher. This one in the end there is what will set your eyelet and also it rotates around so you can you know do different things or whatever and then so yeah that's what I have for that and now watch me not remember how to which one goes to which because I won't remember It'd be trial and error, right? Because <laughs> I won't remember. Anyways, so I got that. I have my Tim Holtz Distress Sink and Vintage Photo. If you want to distress your edges of your pages, that's up to you. I just, I, this was out from something else I worked on. So I have that out. Um, I'm going to be using some buttons. These are just a small container of buttons I got because all my other ones are in bags, like seven Ziploc bags, gallon size Ziploc bags full. I love buttons, love them. Still have to sort them now. I'll be using those for something I'm going to make, which I'll, I'll do the video on that also. I'm going to make something for to put in my signatures. I'm just going to use plain copy paper in my signatures. And then each signature, because um, I'm, I'm going to decorate the pages with what I get from, you know, my friends um, within the group, you know. So I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to use any other types of paper except for like just plain copy paper. I can always doll it up later. So I'm, I'm just using plain copy paper and it's... Um, Give me a second and I can tell you. This is what I'll be using. Is this. It's 20 pound. I like it. I use it in a lot of stuff. It's It seems thin, but it for me it works. I also have a 65 pound, but that's kind of thick for me. And... I just like how this one works. So there's several different weights. You go with what you feel you are comfortable with. That's that's up to you. This is just what I prefer. That and it was free. So you can't go wrong when it's free. You work with what you got. Um, the other thing, I have my ruler. You can't really see my grid line, but this is my cutting mat underneath. But I had to use... I have another cutting mat that got warped and instead of throwing the whole thing away I cut off what was good on it still because I have plastic liner over this one because this is my quilting craft mat under here um, and my other one doesn't fit on this table so and I can't find my, my little 12 by 12 cutting mat <clears throat> or my glass, I have a glass cutting board that has grapes on it. <laughs> and I stuck it sideways somewhere where it wouldn't fall and get broke. Because I knew I'd be using it eventually and I cannot find where I stuck that. I looked for a while and could not find it. So, yeah. This is the piece I cut off from the other, um, the other mat. It's got inches 1 through 17. You know, and these numbers are backwards, but that I'm, I'm not. That's fine. Um, I can always redo the numbers if I wanted to, but it's just something so I have a surface, so I'm not cutting into anything else. So that's what I have that for. And then I have my brown craft mat, which is heat resistant. Everybody usually has these. And I don't know how I got a cut there, but I got a cut there. I should tape over it, but. I have a couple others that I got from the grocery store, Ollie's. They're heat resistant mats or baking oven mats or something like that. Um, let's see. That's what it is. It's an oven liner. 
I picked up two of them because they were two ninety nine, but they were half off. So, uh, yeah, they were half off. So you can't beat that. Um, you can place it in the oven, and cook right on it. Um. So I assumed it's basically, and it wipes right clean, and you can put it in the dishwasher. Um, it's heat resistant up to four hundred degrees, nonstick. You can use it as a cookie sheet. So it's basically, I guess, a lot of people put it in the bottom of their ovens or stuff to keep it clean. But yeah, so I already have one open. The, I got two of them because that was a good deal. And the size is 15.8 by 19.6 inches, and it is 40 by 50 centimeters. So it's a pretty good size. I think it's actually bigger than this one. Yeah. But that's over on the other table with stuff on it, so I can't get to that one. I'm trying to think, um, you're going to need some binding needles, or I actually, I don't know if it's in here. No, maybe. I have, you can go to Walmart or even Joann's. It's in my sewing box, and I can't get to my sewing box right now, but they have embroidery needles. They're basically just like this one here. They're wide eyed, and so usually they're plastic or something, but you want something that's going to be able to get through the hole. So you got, depending on how big you make your holes, I mean, you got to take that into consideration with what string you're using and so forth, or what twine or whatever you're using for the binding part of itself. Um, but I have several binding needles in here. I have some round ones. See which direction that we go, but that's this one. I like this one. Um, I also have upholstery needle. That's what I use the most, but it's it's kind of fatter in the box. Let's see the difference here. This one's got a bend to it, and it's uh, there we go. A little flat, or fatter. Whereas this one's more rounded and pointed. So I usually use this one or one just smaller from that. That's usually what I use. Ouch, I just poked myself. But um, it's up to you. Upholstery needles work good because they're, they're made for thick fabrics or whatnot. So I have my binding needles and I keep my binding needles in a Sucrets tin that's labeled binding needles because... I don't want to lose them. And there's a magnet in there to help keep them stuck to it. And then I just have it set off to the side of my table. When I use this, I use a, I take a fat phone book or a fat magazine catalog, open it up, and then I'll sit my stuff in the middle of it. Or I just have a thick surface that I can use because this will poke through a lot of stuff. This is a... I got it at uh, Ace Hardware, I believe, or True Value Hardware stores. And I don't know where the safety end went, but I really like this one. And I have a couple, one that looks like a screwdriver. That's not as pointy as this one. This one's more sharp. Yeah, it's sharper than the other one. The other one's a little duller. But I like using this one more. Um, I have a sponge brush to spread my Mod Podge on. Uh, let's see here. What else? Oh, score tape. Um, aside from using the Fabri-Tac, I usually put on the edges, close to the edges, um, let's say this is my cover and this is what I'm putting down. I usually try to go right to the edge with the score tape. You know, I'll peel it off, stick it to the edge, and roll it down the edge. And then when you lay your paper down or whatever you're putting on top, lay it to the edge. I always try to keep it on the edge of these, whatever I'm putting down. If I'm just putting paper over it, it depends. But I, whatever I add paper, like a, a square piece, this I probably won't do that because I'm using the Mod Podge. But once I add my cover paper, such as this, or the inside cover, I'll use my score tape. 
to make sure the edges are going to be nice and stuck down. And I usually run a small line of the um, Fabri-Tac on the sticky tape. It just reinforces it and make sure you burnish the, uh, the tape down before you pull the backing off. And then once you place your piece down, burnish it really good. For those of you not, that don't know what burnishing is, I think I said that right. Uh, basically, you use your bone folder and you just press it down. You know, go over it really, really good to burnish them edges. Um, and that'll get a good adhesion. Is that a word? I don't know. But that'll get a good, you know, uh, what's the word? Adhe I guess that's the word I'm going to use. Adhesion. Haha. <laughs> To it so that way nothing lifts up to me that's just easier than trying to fight with getting glue up underneath the edges or something so and then I always try to keep this in my scoreboard because I have no idea where the one went that came with this I lost it like four years ago in in uh, my old craft room before I moved to the basement and still never found it so no clue it's somewhere don't know where and this is a score tool a scoring tool i got from stampin up um it was given to me i hear you pixie come here come here come here no come here i know i hear you come here you want to say hi to everybody <laughs> say hi up here Right here, Lulu. Right there. Right here. You, Jesus. <laughs> oh, what was that? Ouch. Hi. Hi. Yes, I see you. No, lick us. Quit licking me. You are a freak. Quit. So, that's that. Are you going to get down now? It's too hot for you to be on Mama's lap. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Did you eat already? Did you eat your dinner? Okay. Um, I'm just trying to go over with what I'm thinking right off the bat of what we're going to need. Or what you're going to need. If you don't have a bone folder, you don't have to have one. You don't have to have a scoreboard. There, I can show you ways of how to do it without either one of those. Um, ouch. My knee. I'll try to remember, I'll, you know, how to explain both ways, just in case. Because I know some people don't have some other of the items that others have. I, for one, don't have some stuff that other people have. So I understand. But first we're going to, oh, the other thing you're going to need is a type of thread, binding thread, a twine, cotton or wax thread. Um, this is, I don't even know what this is, but I got a big old tube of these. There's a bunch of them. And I kind of liked this, these, but you don't get enough. I don't, in my opinion, I don't think you get enough for, let's see, four yards of it. I don't know. I just didn't think four yards was enough in my opinion because <laughs> if you if you do like a lot of signatures and you're just not gonna have enough room but I've got this is my container of twine aside from these which I got these like four years ago uh, most of this others these all came from the Dollar Tree you can get them at Dollar Tree and they work really good for binding I'm telling you they really do um and I, oh, I also have my beading wire, some of my beading stuff up in here too, but this is not that full of that, believe me. <laughs> There's beading stuff below there. Um, Rick Rack. So it's not just a specific thing, but. So you can use yarn, uh, kite string, fishing line. I mean, it's, it's up to you what you, what you want to use when you do your sewing in your signatures. Um, the wax is easier to go through the paper. It just slides easier through the paper. Um, and I have a little, oh, I don't know where it is. 
Let me let me see if I can grab. I think it's in my other desk. One second. Okay, got it. Um, it looks like this, and it comes apart, so you can rotate it. Whatever. This is a piece of wax and you just put your string in there and you slide it through it, hold it down into the wax and slide it through it. It waxes the string to help pull it through your holes whenever you punch the holes. And that just goes by with depending on how big of holes you punch or things of that aspect. Um, if you have a, a big bite, I got this on clearance like two years ago I think it was love it they had one at work it was marked at $2.99 in the package and I was like oh my god I want to get that even though I already had one I could have used I could have got it for that price and could have you know gifted it to somebody who didn't have one but we're only allowed to shop before work after work or on our days off and it happened to be on a Sunday and I opened and to close that day so I wasn't able to and I had a work morning shift the next day so by the time I came back in or had the time to be able to get it it was already gone I was so mad I was like ah oh. but check your local thrift stores I'm telling you you never know what you might find there um this I'll use to put the holes in the spine to get to the middle it's got the ruler on it size and these switch around the different sizes and then um, okay ouch this button up top it gives you the option of a three I think that's a three I don't know oh oh yeah one eighth or three sixteenth yeah I think that's three sixteenth um for your hole right down there I don't know if you can see it coming out there we'll just pop that in there no we won't that won't fit that's what he said um basically you can see it right here it'll put the holes and then if you move it to the other one it does a smaller hole and then if it's all the way at this the front that keeps those from coming out so those will not push out when you're you can use this also is a crocodile basically um, this is good for smaller things to put in and then this is for like the deeper spine or whatever you know this is a little bigger and a little more heavy so those are that's your option on that so I will be using that Uh, what else do I have? Oh, the score tape. I got this at Michael's. They, ha I think it's at Michael's. Yeah, either Michael's or Joanne Fabrics. I think it was Michael's, but it's it. It's um, MS Sparkle and Company. It comes in different sizes. I don't know if it was Michael's, Joanne's, or which one of those two, but it comes in these sizes: a one inch, a half inch, and a quarter. Um, and of course I picked up like a couple of each one that I know I use a lot of, but I also have on hand regular score tape. I also have an eighth inch score tape. So there's different sizes that you can get. That's up to you. You don't have to use score tape. I mean, that's your decision. I just personally, any double sided tape, I guess that's acid free, I think, but I just personally like to double enforce it, reinforce it with the score tape on top of using the glue. So that, but then again, that's just, that's user preference. So if that's totally up to you. Alright, let's put this up. Oops, sorry, Lulu. I'll put that up. That's a gift card you can use this to spread your Mod Podge on 
Maybe you don't have a foam brush or a paintbrush. You can use your paintbrush for your finger, whatever works for you. Um, but that's it for this video. I'm going to stop it and then start the next one because this way they're not all that long. I will include this one in the next step though. I'm already at like a half hour. Probably too much talking. Sorry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you can use gift cards to spread them on or anything like that. So I will be back in just a few. Welcome back, y'all. Had to take Pixie out. Went around the side of the trailer. She about had a rabbit. She won't leave those things alone here. So... Then I had a freak out moment. I couldn't find the recorded first part where it was. But I, like, I thought I didn't get it. So I was all freaking out when I found it. I was like, oh man, 30 minutes wasted. But, oh, we're saved. So I have my cutting board here. I'm going to use that to trim this down. And basically, you just open up the side of the box. Um, I'm going to cut all this extra flaps off of mine. That's how I do mine. So that's just what I'm going to do. Um, you can fold it like this so it fits easier under your mat. Or not mat, your cutter. Uh, you can either cut on the, the line there or just above it. I'm going to cut like Pretty much probably just above it and depending on your cutter how good it is so whether or not you can cut it through that much but as you can see I went just above the line there maybe about a quarter of an inch which is fine this is a bigger box I think this is the bigger box no it's not the bigger box so, let's change boxes. <laughs> of course. So, I'm just not going to wrap that open yet. I'm just going to cut it first. Let me try this again. Go over it a few times if you have to. There we go. I got a trash bag on the side here to put all the tidbits in because of Pixie. And I'm pushing it up against the bottom trim piece or you can push it up to the top to even. For me, it's easier to have it at the bottom because I can hold it towards me more. Let's run your slider over a few times so it cuts it. You can, I have like uh, extra cardboard and stuff, so me keeping that really isn't that big of a deal. I have a lot of, I have a wooden crate, a pretty good sized wooden crate, and it's packed full of recycled boxes, so I'm not going to be in the need of boxes. So we're just going to open this one up. I hope I don't get a paper cut, because that would suck. I already got two at work. Should be easy just to run your finger down through there. Then I'm going to cut this piece off. That flap. You can save these for tabs or other, you know, to punch stuff out of. Whatever you like. That's up to you. And I'm going to trim this piece off. And then what I'm going to do is measure the sides and see the front and back to make sure these are both the same size here because you don't want one bigger than the other. You want them to be the same size. So we're going to measure that really quick and see. 
Now I'm going to measure from the fold, the crease. I'm just going to butt my ruler up against that. So I'm going to go seven inches. So I'm going to cut just a sliver off on that side. And see, this side's longer. So this side's three, the copper side is three quarters inch longer. So we're going to trim it down to seven inches on each edge. And I'm just going to basically line up, I got to stand up here, line up the fold to my mark there. And just trim that edge, flip it around, line that up. So seven, push that up, up, flush up against this edge. There. And there we go. If you measure it now, well, if I measure it, not use it. Seven, I'll do it from the inside cover. We got seven inches there, just under seven it looks like. Yep, we're even. Yeah, so it's six and, I don't know. I'm not very good with a ruler. I just know if I line it up somewhere, it's going to work. So that's going to be the that part of it. Using a cereal box is easier because it's already got the folded bend, so it'll be easier to open and close. Um, since I'm going to use copy paper, though, I'm, I need to check something. So, since copy paper is folded in half, it's five and a half inches. So I'm going to actually want my cover to be six inches. So then I have an overhang because when you stack 10 pieces of paper together, you're going to get a little bit of an overhang on your pages. If you like that, you can keep it like that or you can trim them. So if you, I'm going to have to trim it this way too. Yeah. If you, um, Depending on how many signatures you want to how many pages, when you put together two, three, four, five pieces of paper folded, put it into each other, that's one signature. Oh, uh, let me get a one of my journals and I'll show you. This is one of my journals I made using chipboard. The charm. I haven't finished it yet. I'm just going to show you something for an example here so all right each section here is a signature this book has three signatures and basically my cover is wider than my signatures once they're in so they don't stick out so depending on what closure you're using you don't want to bend your pages me personally I kind of like it like that to where there's, I'm not going to damage because like this one has the lace. So if you had tabs sticking out, you know, you don't want your, depending on the closure, you don't want that to bend up whatever you put there. So each signature, and depending on the signature size, so what papers, you know, if you keep your, if the papers are the same size or not, like here you can see some of them kind of overhang from each other. Some people like that, some people like it straight. That's, again, by your choice. So, this using chipboard, you can make your spine bigger, which this one, I believe, is two and a half inches. 
Yeah. Roughly around two and a half inches, two and three quarters. So I love this journal. I haven't finished it yet. The, the inside's done. I just got to do the cover and then add the pocket and such here. And thing on the back. So. And something else I'm going to add in this for. Um, I think I put it in here. I don't remember. I have to look just a second. Yes. I have a pattern to make. I don't know if I can find the other half of it though. <laughs> One, two, three, and four. It's a large. It closes on each end. So this is one piece here. And then you just put it in there as in your signature, fold it in half. And basically, these are Velcroed on shut so it's a pocket. I'm going to make some of those to go inside my journal. Um, so that's what the buttons are for. So I'm going to add that. But I love that. It's one of my favorite things. I haven't decided if I'm going to tea dye or stain or anything like that with a copy paper. I might leave it blank. But I might add some stitching once I get my sewing machine out. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Um, I might add some book page pockets. Things like that. Here's the envelope I made. You know, stick stuff in there, you know. It's your choice on what you add. This is a white envelope opened up and put in there. So again, that's your choice on what you add. This is a, a pocket here. So I'll tuck spot pocket. Um, you can do some tip-ins and tip-outs. Here's another one of those envelope, large envelope things. It's, it's your choice on what you want to add into your journal. And they're going to be yours, yours to keep. So like here's a tuck spot. And also you can probably, well, maybe not put nothing there really. That doesn't hold it much, but so there's a tuck spot there. It's your choice. We're not going to send the journals to anybody. We're going to keep those and they're going to be our own personal. So we can look back and see what friends we've made in the group and what we've gotten and where they're from. So that's just a, a view of one of my journals. And she, this is, she's very big. I believe she's nine. Uh, she's nine and a half inches by, what I say, six and a half, six and three quarters, something like that. So that's that's your choice, your decision. I like a little extra on the top and a little extra on the bottom up here. Because if you add a charm, you're going to want a little bit of space up at the top. But that's your choice. So for me, I'm going to want at least a quarter of an inch on the bottom. And actually, we're going to go half an inch up just so it's even. So I'll go like a half inch up from either end. I think that's what I did on that one. Just a second. Yeah. I'll go about a half inch up. And then when I sell my signatures, I'll have the holes for those more down here through the center there. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to cut, uh, let's see here. I'm going to trim it down to nine and a half. So we're going to go nine and a half height. And then I'll probably go, uh, we'll see what I do after that part. We'll see where I'm at then. Sorry, Lulu. Mama didn't mean that. I'm sorry. Sorry. And I got, um, yeah, we're going to just trim it off the top. So I'm going to go nine and a half on my cutting board, which is here. Actually, I'm going to go just a tad bit over it so then I can flip it over and cut another straight line to make sure it's straight. 
So, trim that down. And then I'm just going to flip it over and go to the nine and a half from this end here. And just cut that extra piece off just so I know I have a straight edge on that side. It's just personal preference. Okay. And then, let's see here. I'm probably going to go with. I think I'm going to trim the sides down a half of an inch off. So we're going to just bring it over to the half inch mark here on the board, which is on the opposite side of my line. This is my cutting. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Here's my cutting line. So I'm just going to move it over to the half inch mark on the other side of that. Cut that half inch off and then turn it around and do the same on that end. There we go. Take care of this again. All right, so some of you know that um, Gluing things down to a smooth surface like this with like a waxy type coating does not stay very well. So sandpaper it, rough it up type thing. I don't know. Yes, I do know what's right there. Oh, sweet. I'm going to stop the video for a second, pause it, and I'm going to rough mine up really fast with some sandpaper and then I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So you can see the don't dullness to it now. I went over it with my sandpaper and this is I have no idea the oh, 100 grit medium. I just it's what I had on hand. So I'm going to find my baby wipes real fast and I'm going to wipe it off just to get the dust off in case there's any dust left over. I shook it off outside. I did it outside, so. Get over there. Alright, so I'm just going to wipe it off with a baby wipe just to get that extra dust off. You can use a wet paper towel or whatever you have on hand. See, just get that extra dust off. Another thing with sandpaper roughing it up. It'll also help the glue adhere to the paper. It'll help this cardboard, chipboard, whatever you want to call it, adhere to the paper. If you're using plain chipboard, you don't have to do this stuff. Um, this is just preference. And I also went over the spine, the fold, with uh, the sandpaper. It took me a second. Um, I'm also going to use some Tyvek. I'm going to put it over the spine on the front and the back to help reinforce this because Tyvek does not tear easy. And you can get these from the post office. I use them to ship things, so I have them on hand. Um, it's your choice. This opens easily for the most part. Ugh. That part tears. It does the whole, like you can't just rip it like a piece of paper. That's what I mean by it. you can't tear it. So I can't get that piece off. So I'm just going to trim that down, trim that piece off of the edge there, there we go. Um, if you don't want to use this, that's it's up to you. This is just my preference, I like to use it. I'm gonna, I already know this is needs to be 9 
two. It's hard to cut it when it's longer than your cutting board. So <laughs> we're just going to fold it over, line up the edge real quick. And I'm just going to cut this section off. And then I can trim it down to the size I need. My book's got nine inches tall. Nine and a half. No, I forgot. Nine and a half. So I'm going to cut this to nine and a half. Turn it around this way. Actually, I'm going to cut it just a tad under nine and a half. Oops. So that it doesn't have to go all the way to the edge. So it's just going to be just a tad bit shorter. And then I might be able to just cut this in half. Let's see how big that is. Hmm. Yeah, that'll be good. Maybe. No, I think I'll cut the other end off too. So I'm going to cut this about three inches. For some reason, I'm not straight, but that's okay. Oh, look at that. They almost matched. So we'll just use that. I should have gone a little bit over so you get more of an overhang on it, but this will work. Set that off on the side. Oh, watch out, Lulu. Okay, so. And this is probably going to be upside down to you guys. Sorry about that. Turn that little corner off. So it's not going to go directly to the edges. Just almost to the edges. And that's what I want. So I'm going to take I'm find my score tape again. Since I have the one inch score tape, I'm going to go ahead and use, first I'm going to cut that edge off right there to make it a, a straight edge on there. And that wasn't even straight because I can't cut straight, obviously. Let's stick that there. Actually, I'm going to run it up over just a tad bit over the edge of the book. And I'm going to bring it down just to the edge there. And just run my scissors over it to trim the edge. I can cut that off or fold it up on her later. So I'm going to run a piece over each edge, each side. I can flip it over like this and just take my blade and my exacto knife or craft knife, which is not staying in for some reason. Just run it along the edge of my cardboard there and take the excess off. I'm going to burnish that down with my bone holder if I can find it. Because this is going to bend, you really want to get it over it good. Let's turn that up just a little bit there. A piece sticking up here. So you really want to burnish that down. 
and then work with it to bend it. I probably should have gone over a little bit more on that one. That's okay. I probably will still. Once I pull this piece up, I'm going to add another piece there just because I didn't get it as far over as I should have. Let me do that again. I should have went just a tad bit over more from where I was at. That'll work. Just gonna burnish that down on top. And then bend again. This is to help kind of crease that tape so it'll give it an easier bend. And I always go to the backwards. You don't have to, it's just me. Okay. Um, add some tape in the center there. Button it up against this other side, maybe. I'm also going to put a layer of fabric tack down just to help secure it just a tad. And again, that's just my preference. You do not have to do that. You don't have to add the score tape if you're using glue. That's that's up to you. I'm gonna. That's just my choice. I just like to. Okay, so pull up the score tape pieces here. Put my blade cover back on because I'm clumsy, accident prone. Yeah. And find my bottle of Fabri-Tac. And I'm just gonna do a little layer. Fabri-Tac looks like you're using a lot, but you're actually you don't really use a lot. And Fabri-Tac does have a smell to it, so if you don't like smells, uh, you might want to have a well ventilated area. It doesn't last. It's a quick, I mean, it's not like it's majorly. Just move it around, covering. You don't have to do every square piece inches of it. There you go. And I did turn my autofocus off. So I'm hoping that doesn't do the focus issue I had the last time. Then I'm just going to put this across. It's hard to see where my tape is, but I know this is a little bit longer than the tape. Nope, not there. Don't do that. <laughs> Just don't line it up there. There we go. Okay, with Fabri-Tac, you, you have a, a quick second to move it. But it dries pretty quick. And one thing I do know, if you want to distress your edges with Fabri-Tac, if you're using Fabri-Tac as your glue, you want to distress your edges and stuff beforehand, before you use the glue, because it won't, the ink or whatever you use does not cover very well. I know from experience, I'm speaking from experience here, so. So I got that burnished down really good. I pretty much made it all the way to the edges of my tape, so that was a pretty good guess. And now I'm going to kind of just slowly bend this to stretch that tie back around. And then run the bone folder over the spines. The 
creases and then back down just to help make sure I get that glue and that tape together and like I said if you're using a cereal box it is a lot flimsier than using chipboard and as you can see it's flimsy I might I might go ahead and reinforce the inside cover to help give it a little more secure. Let me see. I've got that other cereal box, so I can trim that down and use that. So I think I will do that. Give me a second here. Trim this off the edge there. I, mean, I got a ton of cereal boxes, so I'm not really worried about that. I've seen some people just cut the box down the same exact size and glue it to it. I don't like doing it that way. I don't feel like you get a good connection between your fold with the other one doing it that way. So I'm not going to do it like that. I'm just going to cut each piece individually. Um, yeah, that will work. That'll work. So this was six and a half. Yeah, so we're going to go six and a half on each of the long, these ones. Ugh. Let's see here. First, we'll cut it down to nine. Oops. Or nine and a half, I am sorry. Nine and a half. Yep. And then ouch. I'm just going to cut it where the fold is. Let's see, that one actually, I think that one lines up. That's funny. Yeah, that side almost pretty much lines up. So I'm just going to cut this here at the fold. This one. Trim just a tad bit more off this side. I can feel like it. There we go. Just a sliver off that edge. I didn't like the way that fold was on that. So then that side's the same. And just a little bit off that edge there. There we go. That one wasn't too bad. Oh, maybe a little bit more. We'll see this part of it anyway when I put them together because it's going to be covered by paper, so you won't be able to see all that extra cardboard on the side there. Okay. And then the spine. That'll be alright. That'll work. So even though the spine doesn't go edge to edge, I'm okay with that. I'm just going to work with that because then it still can fold. I'm trying to keep stuff picked up because little pixie butt here. She will find a way to get it. So then it would, it'll just go like this on top of that one and like that. So I'll just put glue these down, make sure they line up good, not overhanging any. Yeah, that'll work. And that'll 
that'll help make it sturdy. A lot sturdier than it was. So that's just you don't have to do this step. I'm just doing it just so I can make it sturdier. Yeah. And of course I gotta sandpaper these. So I will be back again in a moment. Okay, I'm back. So I've sandpapered and I wiped them down. <coughs> Usually what I like to do is, uh, we'll use this one over here. I'm going to glue the cardboard side to the cardboard side. Gets a better adhere. So I'm going to put some score tape at the very edge of one side with a bead of the Fabri-Tac down the side. I'm going to line the score tape up directly to the edge as close as I can get it. And then I'll stick this down and then lift it up as I glue the rest of it down. And then when I get to the bottom, I'll pull this extra piece of score tape off. Turn it this way so I can see better. And again, this is just preference for me. You don't have to do this like that. It's just my preference. Burnish that. Burnish, burnish. I'm not sure the word burnish. I think it is burnish. It. Burnishing. Hope I stay in frame for you guys. I'm just gonna line that up. I'll start, I'll line it up from the bottom where I want it and then press it down just to make sure that it lines up evenly. I'm not relatively staying close to the right side edge as I am the left side and the top and the bottom here. So I'll give this a good burnishing and then once it's Set mostly. I'll raise this up and then I will add my glue. As you can see, that score tape there just helps so it doesn't move and shift on me. That's just what I found works for me. And you can either glue it on one or the other if you can't see under it. And I just do little sections at a time. Pressing down. I'll use my bone folder and kind of press it inward and out back towards the center. Doing it this way is a little longer than just gluing it and throwing it down, but for me this works. And you'll get some that seeps out the edges. It'll wipe up. Don't worry. There's a nice breeze outside right now. I got a screen for my craft room window to put in. It's so hot in this trailer. It's been a long time since I've lived in a mobile trailer, so I am by far not used to any of this. There's no central air, and I don't have an air conditioner. So I've got a couple fans, and I've got a screen from mom and dad to put in to help cool it off because of pixie during the day. So. Let's 
just going to burnish that side down. And with Fabri-Tac, if you get it on your book or whatever, you can just rub your finger over it and it pretty much bubbles right up. I also have a glue eraser. Um, the, those things are awesome. I think it's in my other drawer. And I'm just going to keep doing this down about an inch or so each time. You don't want to bend the top piece back too far. You'll get a crease in there. When you run it, the when you run your bone folder or whatever you're using to squish it down, you really want to work it out from inside out towards the edge to help spread that towards the edge of the top piece. You don't want to bring it all into one spot because if you work it around, get it pressed down in there, and then you want to work from the inside out. To help press it to the edge of you'll see that it squishes out which is fine that just means you're right at the edge and that'll help seal that edge closer the edge won't lift up it shouldn't lift up anyways because we're going to cover that side we're going to put stuff over it so but I should just leave this one set and use the new bottle. Me, uh, personally, I like the smell of Fabri-Tac. It doesn't really bother me none. <coughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm just used to it because I've used it so much. But if you don't like strong smells and things like that, you don't have to use it. I just prefer it because you don't get no warp to your paper or things like that so that's just my preference again and it dries easy no pixie not easy it dries quick it, it adheres quickly I'm just going to go ahead and go all the way to the bottom and then peel my tape. Oops, not off the bottom, to the bottom. Way to go, Spanky. So I have to work Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then I have Monday off, which my roommate will be here Sunday. And then Monday we'll be unloading their U Haul and that kind of stuff. And then I gotta work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday again, and then I'm off for three days. So I'm excited for my three-day weekend again. Because from the sounds of it, I might not get another one because we're getting switched over to our new schedule, which will be Monday through Friday, three, uh, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for me. So I'm gonna take advantage of that three-day weekend coming up. And Excuse me. Got a lot of stuff to get done and things like that. And then the 24th, my daughter's coming up from Florida for a visit. And I get to meet baby Valerie for the first time. So I'm super excited for that. She'll be seven months old when I get to meet her. But they're going to be here for a couple hours. Most of the day, I guess. So I'll be posting pictures. She looks so much like her mama and her sister. They look a lot like me, too. But yeah, you just rub it, and the glue comes off pretty easy. And it, it'll it come off from your surface if you have a non-stick surface. I probably should have put the other thing over this, but since I was using my craft knife or 
exacto knife blade whatever you want to call it i knew i didn't want to do that so so that is done that side and you can tell the difference already the the big difference it made and i didn't get it all the way to the edge which is fine that's not relatively a big deal so it's fine it doesn't have to be perfect nothing's perfect so <coughs> and pixie's in the worst spot ever like right below me and i can't slide my chair further so yay okay next i'll do this right side cover well this side and again i'm going to put the score tape down Trim this edge here in a second. There we go. And I have specific scissors for paper and specific spa uh, spacers, okay? scissors for my fabric because you don't want to use fabric scissors with paper scissors or paper scissors on fabric scissors. They won't work. <laughs> it does not work. You will dull your shears or scissors or whatever if you use them on one or the other if you're using them for the other so you kind of want to have two pairs if you're messing with fabric or things like that <coughs> unless you don't mind old scissors then that, that's up to you I've got oh dang it that went down too far I've got a couple pair that I got from like Dollar Tree and stuff like that cheap ones that's fine my cheap ones I'll use for paper. My other ones I'll use for my crafts. I got three different sizes of these. That pair, that pair, and I have a large pair. I got this set of three at their singer. Um, at Joann's they were marked down. And plus I had a coupon that day for 20% off my purchase and including sale items. So I got all three of these. And I have another set of the larger ones for my fabric. So I have more shears somewhere. I just didn't find that other box yet. But, whoops. I like to use the smaller ones when I'm doing stuff. And the larger ones for the bigger stuff. But that's just me. I'm just going to burnish these down really good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we'll start at the top. No pixie. I'm going to switch glues real quick. This one's almost gone. And there goes pixie barking. In a second, watch. The neighbors must be out or the people next door are arguing again. It's one thing I don't miss it. Or one thing I miss about the country. Are you not open? You're open. Yeah, stick your face to it, Spinky. Oh. No, it's not open because <laughs> I can't open it for eh. Hang on. Oh my goodness. Come on. For real? Oh, I can't get the lid off. It's got the seal on the inside. I could have swore this was the other open one. Okay, one second. It won't come out because it's not opened yet. That's why. I have... That's not open either. Lord. Aha, uh -huh. got the open one. I hope. Yes. Okay, now we're good. <laughs> Way to go, Landa. Okay, let's try this again. No, we're just going to run a bead around it. And sometimes with a Fabri-Tac, it will gloop up out the top. So, and don't stick your hand in it. Lord. Yuck. I just got it all over my hand. 
Don't do that. Well, that spots. Good. All right. And again, I'm just going to measure it to the top and bottom and the left side there. Make sure it's nice and even on the side. And then press it down there. <laughs> and give it a good burnish. I can't believe I stuck my hand in the oh, Yes, I can believe it, but you know. Make sure I'm lined up pretty good on the sides there. There we go. And do what I on the last one. Just run the glue on the inside there and until I get to the bottom. And I pull it back just a tad bit just so I can get underneath that area where the tape is, if it'll come up a little bit. So then I can get a good seal right there. If the camera is shaking, I'm sorry, I can't tell if it is. But it's on a boom arm connected in front of me. So I might have to make this hole bigger. This looks like it's a lot of glue, but it, it really isn't. I'll take any input you guys have if I'm out of, you know, out of, uh, out of frame or, you know, if you need, if I'm too far out, if it's not zoomed in enough or, you know, I'm still new to this. <laughs> Excuse me. I think I got the lighting good today. There's no sunshine because it's been thunderstorms today. I'm not trying to sniff the glue. <laughs> I had an itch on the tip of my nose. I, I promise I'm not trying to sniff the glue. <laughs> I think when I make my friend's journal, Marie from work, I'm going to use chipboard for hers. Uh, it's going to be a prayer journal. I'm still looking for stuff to put in it. Um... But I'm going to do chipboard with hers. Mostly it's going to have a lot of journaling spot. Maybe a few stamped pages, but mostly journaling. And um, I'm going to add some drawing paper and maybe <laughs> some thicker drawing paper. Uh, might do some watercolor paper or uh, mixed media paper. She doodles a lot and stuff, so that was something we were discussing. She does know about it because she was actually interested in me making one for her to buy. And this is after two months of me planning uh, this. So she was like, well, I want to know, you know, the price and, you know, stuff like that beforehand. And so I was like, well, because she's like, well, I wanted one. So I was like, well, you know, when I was asking all the questions I've been asking you about, you know, your favorite color, what you like, <laughs> what you would like in a journal. She's like, yeah, I was like, well, I'm going to make you one. And she's like, oh, no, 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 you don't have to do that. I'm like, it's too late. So she's very excited. Excuse me, I had to get a drink. <laughs> she's very excited, so. And I'm going to record the process of that one also. But she doesn't work there no more. She quit and found a different job. <laughs> but we're staying in contact. She's awesome. She made me laugh so much at work. <laughs> she said, <laughs> oh, she just, she's, she does a lot of puns. And then a Dow song came on. I don't know which song, but I think hello, maybe. So I'm like not 
focusing because I'm extremely tired and it's just it had been a long day. And my I had a headache. So I think it was Saturday or Saturday, Friday or Saturday. So last week she says, is this a Dell or iMac? I was like, what? I was like, I don't, I don't really know names of artists of songs. I said, but I'm pretty sure this is Adele. And then she's like, really, Londa? Which is, Londa's my name. If you guys don't know, I go by Spanky though. Um, she was like, really? I was like, what? She's like, you didn't get it. And I was like, Adele or iMac? I was like, what? I was like, there isn't somebody named iMac. And she was like, do I have to spell it out for you? So I like thought to myself again, I was like, seriously, Marie. So, you know, Adele, Adele computer or iMac, iMac computer. So, yeah. I miss her funniness so much and her encouraging words. She does text me and give me pep talks for the day. But, yes, I miss her being there and the laugh. Oh, we laughed so much. We would laugh so much. She's so funny. I love her to death. And the funny part of it. I think I'm either one year or a few months or something close to that vicinity of a year age as her mom, either older or younger, but within like a year, I think I'm older. So yeah, it's funny how well we just, we get along and she's so wise, very inspirational. And she gave me a Bible as a going, uh, her going away gift to me. I gave, um, Sean did that auction of his spray paint arts and I was bidding on the cross one he did and Karen bought outbid me and said that she was buying it for me to give to my friends. So that was awesome of Karen. She was like, I'm buying this for Spanky. Well, I was buying it for my friend. So I made sure she knew that. And it was all good. And I gave it to her. We, we're get, we're going to have a girl's day. And I'm going to go get a frame. We're going to go pick out a frame. And it's going to take a special frame for that. So we're both going to go pick it out. And when she's seen it Saturday. Was her last day last weekend. When she's seen it. She just like was floored. She loves it. And everybody at work seen it. And was very impressed. And my boss. She was intrigued too. So good job Sean. Thumbs up. <laughs> But, so I got, I gave her that and I didn't know she was going to get me a Bible. It was weird. I'll be honest. It was weird. I don't, I don't have a Bible. I used to years and years and years and years ago, but I've just my own thing. Um, but she did ask, I didn't have to promise her, but she did ask me to, when I had certain things coming up when I got sad or depressed or something just to go to a specific section and read that first and then work my way down back from the front. So uh, I told her I will, I can't guarantee it anytime soon, <laughs> but I promised her that I would and it would just collect dust. So, but she's been a big help, like as far as just, stress at work or little things and we were both dealing with a lot of stress and <clears throat> it was okay she she's taught me how to just let things go roll it off let it roll let it go so a lot of things don't even bug me anymore that used to she's I don't know how she did it but there's a reason people come to our lives and I don't know I love her to death she's Totally opposite of me. Totally opposite. I don't curse as much at work. <laughs> I don't say dirty jokes as much anymore. <laughs> she rubbed, rubbed me off, like rubbed off on, not rubbed me off, that really sounded bad. Rubbed off on me in a good way as far as how I am in public now for the most part. <laughs> there, I'm still there. It's still me. I just have more respect of who's around me type thing, I guess. I had respect before too, but I just, whatever. It is what it is, you know, but I did curse a lot and I catch myself now 
because it some people don't like it, which is understandable. So, but <laughs> when I talk about going to Arizona in a couple years, um, <laughs> she's like, "Take me with you." <laughs> She loves to travel. She just likes to get in a car and go. I love her to death. I miss her a lot. So I'll be excited to get that journal started for her. And we're going to hang out. She's going to come over and craft with me. She does beadwork and stuff like that. So, yeah. And this second page is down. Or back cover. We got that down. And you can see I didn't get it to the edge right here uh, which way okay there we go maybe there you go that glare is bad sorry I didn't get it all the way to the edge on each side just enough so it, it still folds just fine because if you get it too close to that edge it's gonna it's gonna have a hard time folding properly so having it like this is just fine I got, what's that Ugh. So, yeah, we're going to glue this piece down now. And same thing. I'm just going to probably just lay a score tape down the center. Trim it. And then just run glue in, in there. Does it cover that whole thing? No, I'll just run glue over this. So I got the score tape down there. Now I'm just gonna run the glue here. Kind of spread it out as I go. Maybe you put a, a thin bead of it at the edges when you burnish it down it'll spread that out towards the edge if you run it that direction you know kind of squish it down get the air bubbles types out it'll help move that glue out to the edge okay and I'm going to kind of lay it down and push it upwards to help smudge that. There you go. And that's down. And make sure I'm not off the edges. I don't want it overhanging. There we go. And then burnish that edge down. And that's just to reinforce. You don't have to do this. You don't have to add the extra piece onto that. This is just for me as a reinforcement for, because the cereal boxes are thin. Most of you who have collected them or used them for other crafts, or if you have one, you can see the difference of that and chipboard. There's a big difference. So this is a little loosey goosey instead of tidy mighty. Um, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Yeah, hold on. I said something at work today. So, most of you all know I work at Goodwill Industries. I love it. And I work in the back in the production line where we sort the clothing. And when you wear clothes so much, they get like those little lint balls and stuff like that. Well, <laughs> today I swear, like, the arm it was like a brown shirt and it was so caked in the armpit area of just I don't know the coloring it was like a light brown shirt and the armpit area was black it was I just I didn't understand it but and there was like lint balls on everything and so I told the one working next to me I was like man people shave your balls and then I looked up at him and I was like oh wow that so did not come out how I meant it and we all start laughing um, 
I was referring to a tool, not those kind of tools either. Um, hang on, I'll get it. Okay, if you get, I have a sweater or certain shirts that get like those fuzzies on it. This is a lint remover and it's a saver. You can rub your hand over it, it doesn't do nothing. But basically you just run it nice and softly over your fabric or material or whatever, you know, what your sweaters, and it will take all that extra stuff off. And then it just, it collects it down into the inside. But this is what I was talking about when I said ball shaver and the lint balls on clothing. But it just, it was hilarious in the whole process. So when it came out and about, oh, we start laughing. And then we had to tell, we started talking about it again to somebody else about what was said. They, the person I talked to beginning, uh, we were telling them, they were telling somebody else what was said. And <laughs> so then the man, my manager, the, the top person, whatever, they were like, what? So I was like, well, it wasn't meant to be dirty, but it was like, after I said it, I just thought to myself, like, wow, that was, like, dirty. But it wasn't meant to be dirty. It just, it was funny. But I love where I work. We have, everybody's nice and almost everybody. Uh, I don't know, I like it. There's good days and bad days. I'm there to work, and if I make a friend, then yay. But, you know, that's, I'm there to work. <laughs> So I'm just going to rub some, no I'm not, I'm going to place some score tape down on that, I forgot that stuff. So we're going to go over this half and half on the spine, just, even if it overhangs a little bit, it's okay. Get that on the spine there, and into that groove, and then trim that. Oh, well, well, okay, well, that wasn't supposed to happen, so I went a little too far over on that one, the other direction. I should have came towards me more, so we're just going to fix that real quick with a piece of, there. I'm going to go over that side anyways with another piece of score tape, so it'll be all right, right there. And once you get this down, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't come back up. So there'll be a, a little extra tape on the one side there, which is fine. So I took that piece off so I could kind of see where the edge was right there. And I'm going to double up on that side because I accidentally pulled up the tape there. But I threw some fabric tack down in there so it should connect it just fine and adhere it just fine. And then I'm going to place this back over the top so I can burnish down in that groove. And I'm going to bend my book to do that, or the cover. Bend it and press that down in there as good as I can get it. There we go. And the same with this side. I didn't do it to this side. You want to work your way up. Whoops, just poke a hole in there. If you don't have a bone puller, you can use a ruler to guide it through there. And then you can also use the ruler to bend it for your crease to help. That should be well burnished now. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this piece up and then stick another piece of score tape down up against this other side there. I can already have a feeling this is going to be a little long. I'm still new, so I don't even know half the stuff, you know, like. 
the slower steps. But after I get done with putting this on, I think in the tie back on this next piece there, I will stop it for the night and then the next video will be the next step because I don't want to make them too long. I don't want people to get bored with me already. So the next step will be in a separate video and I'm going to make a uh, playlist specifically for this journal so then it can be checked back on um, to if you can you know just a playlist specifically just for this journal. I'm going to try to remember to do that with all my videos if they are going to be in more than one. Um, it's like a tutorial or something like that. If it's just one tutorial, one video tutorial, like a tutorial on one thing, one video, I'll have a playlist for just tutorials. And then um, if it's like this is going to be a multi-step process, so then I'll have a playlist just for this one. And I think that'll be good. What's the matter, Pixie? Okay, hang on. I know you want up in the chair, don't you? Just a second. Oh, we gotta put the glue down. I forgot a spot. Hang on. Okay. Hang on. Mama, put the glue down. Come here. Come here. Okay. Then you're not getting up here if you don't come here. Ouch, that hurts my legs when you do that. Come here. Up you go. Up, up. There we go. Nope, don't put your nails on that. You'll glue to it. <laughs> you will glue yourself to the book. Okay, so we're just going to put this. Oh, well, this is going to be long enough. I'm, yeah, it'll work. Just slide it down a little bit. Almost to the edge, but not to the edge. <laughs> if you could tell, the, you probably can't tell, but the tape's a little farther off on the one side, which is okay. I accidentally went a little too far over on that side, but it's okay. It'll be covered. So now I'm just going to burnish this all down. And the tie back is just to help kind of um, with the spine, the when you fold the book, it's just going to help reinforce that so it doesn't tear easily. That's pretty much why I use the Tyvek for that reason. Ooh. Let me get a baby wipe here and wipe off that glue. Um, but as you're pressing down, you want to make sure there's no air bubble. Press up the glue up on that side piece there. Because it will, when you fold it, it will kind of stretch it a little bit, and you you might get an air pocket in there, or so. Like right there, I don't have some glue there, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on my bone folder there, run it underneath, and stick it down. There's another way to do it. And I got glue on the side, you know, so I'm just going to use my finger to rub it off. <laughs> That's what he said. I love that saying. Something else that happened at work today. <laughs> we can't keep up seeing, we, we're not allowed to, like, put out onto the floor, from the production line onto the floor. Obscene, gestured shirts. Uh, provocative shirts, nothing to do with drugs, alcohol type, you know, things like that. So sometimes when we get really funny shirts, we, we get bummed that, you know, we can't put them out on the floor. Today, one of the girls got in a shirt with Elmo on it. What are you doing? Give me that lid. No. And Elmo had a mustache and it said, the, the writing on it, and he's holding his mustache with his two four, uh, fingers, you know, like this, you know, like holding his mustache like that, and it says, 
He's got a really dirty look on his face, and it says, this might tickle, just saying. So, we busted up for a good while over that, and was kind of bummed, you know, because we can't buy the shirt, but <laughs> some people, you know, the offended crowd, it was the funniest thing. We got a good chuckle out of it, everybody did, you know, but... You know, we had some that had like a, a rat on it, and it said, um, well, that was crap. What did you do that for, Londa? Because it was just hanging there. But, okay. That's just an excess off of that. That was weird. It's just pulling it up. It'll be okay, regardless. I just didn't want that fuzzy stuff sticking up, but I didn't think it would do this but that's okay I'm not worried I can put another piece of pie back over it anyway so it's all good <laughs> we're just gonna run a whole nother piece of pie back right up over that all this fibers I don't know it's it's all right to me I still got a couple layers under there but uh. So we have some good times at work, and then, you know, they always like to scare me. So, yeah, because I scare easily there. So then you just got to figure out what you want as your top and what you want as your bottom. Um, but I hope you guys understood the steps and followed along easily. Hope the video is not too long. Uh, ignore this. <laughs> I don't know what happened. So then next video, part two, will be the next step. So I hope you enjoy. Bye.